technical technology hey this is a classic example of the church not being the building but the people in it and it's great to see absolutely everybody here this morning um most of you will know what to do in other words mute yourself throughout the service and as and when it's your turn to say something if you're taking part unmute yourself so that you can actually take part um you can either unmute yourself by the button which has got a little microphone on or you can press space bar i believe which works just as well um please remember to do that um just a few thoughts just a few notices if you like look at the website because the website is absolutely brilliant and rachel's done a fantastic job on it and it's great to see and it's great to know that we're still here as a church and it's great to know that the community can still find us remember god's not gone anywhere god's alive and he's living in us and it's our job our job to communicate that to everybody now we have to find a way of communicating that there'll be people that you can see are missing today and i would suggest if you know somebody who's missing whose name is not up on the screen you find the phone number and you give them a ring and you see if there's any way we can get them get to them so that we can let them share in this service let them take part in this service let them share fellowship with one another let them remember that god is with them because he is and he's keeping them safe and he's looking after them as best he can and he can normally when you're elder on duty you go into the back room and you spend two or three minutes just praying with the preacher and while we're doing this it's difficult to do that because you can't get the preacher on his own so i'm going to ask all of you if we could now pray with the preacher so can we play can we please pray father we just want to thank you that we can meet together as a church we thank you lord that you are here with us and that you bless us in everything that we do father we pray for all those other churches throughout this land throughout this world who are trying to do exactly the same as us this morning be with them father this morning we pray that you give kevin the words that you want your church in this area to hear speak through him let your spirit roam freely and touch each one of us we pray in jesus name amen amen i'm now going to hand over to kevin oh bless me thank you can you hear me yeah so it's a joy to be with you and um, would love to have been in person, but uh, it's not to be. Uh, I'll bring you these words from Philippians chapter 4 as, as a call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Going to hear Psalm 130. There we go. Psalm 130. <clears throat> Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence <coughs> serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, <laughs> put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. 
May God's blessing be added to this, his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kate. Amen. So let me offer a prayer. And these prayers we use in the chapel when we pray <coughs> for our quiet days. So let us pray. In the beginning, before time, before people, before the world began, God was. Here and now amongst us, beside us, enlisting the people on earth for the purposes of heaven, God is. In the future, when we have turned to dust and all we know has found its fulfilment, God will be. Not denying the world, but delighting in it. Not understanding the world, but redeeming it. Through Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, God was, God is, God will be. And circle us, Lord, keep strife without and keep peace within. Keep fear without and keep hope within. Keep pride without and keep trust within. Keep evil out, keep good within. And may we walk in the hope of your kingdom and fill us with your light and love. Be with us this day, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And someone, David, I think is going to read the Lord's Prayer to us. So let us pray. So you can follow this on the website version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So in a moment, uh, I think Colin and Elaine are going to read quite a long reading, which is the set reading for today in John chapter 11. And it's hard to um, cut the reading down into a smaller passage. So we're going to listen to it. And it's the story, story of the raising of Lazarus, which I find quite a challenging passage for today, uh, given the current climate that we're in. So I invite Colin and Elaine and maybe Rachel to read this to us now. Thank you. The reading is John chapter 11, reading verses 1 to 45. Can you all hear me? The death of Lazarus. Now a man named Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay ill, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, this illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. On his arrival, 
Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Thank you. It's um, a very powerful reading, especially where we are now in our uh, society, our world, uh, where death is stalking humanity. And so it seems uh, a reading appropriate to think about, but for me quite challenging. Just by introduction, uh, my world, like everybody else's, is turned upside down. The work that I normally do, I now can't do. Uh, and wonder, maybe like you, what the future holds. Um, so working from home and trying to be creative and, and maintain some sort of routine has become quite a challenge. So I'll just share with you uh, a few thoughts from this reading. Uh, and the first one is, I think it's a story about who has the last word. Um, and maybe that's uh, the point I'd like to actually leave you with. Um, but I'm sure we've all had dreams and hopes and found them sometime to be shattered, as if, like in this story, they are buried and gone forever. Life suddenly becomes empty, and Martha and Mary 
surely felt that as they stood beside the grave of their brother, their world has turned upside down. Today is just two Sundays away from Easter, and the journey to Easter in this passage runs through a cemetery. In times of life, we struggle to arrive at our destination. Sometimes with our best efforts, the future seems far away. So these sisters send word to Jesus that their brother Lazarus and a friend of Jesus is ill. The world is beginning to turn against Jesus in this gospel. It's Mary who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet. It's Mary and Martha who provided shelter on the edge of Jerusalem at Bethany. But many times in life, what appears to be an end can also be a new beginning. Sometimes we can only see death, but actually, if we look more carefully, we can see the power of life. Sometimes we only see failure, but God can open a new door. And maybe now we feel a bit abandoned. And my prayer that God would draw near and we would find hope and assurance. So in the Christian calendar, we're on the journey towards Easter and we have to get there through the reality of fear and disappointment. And in this passage, we have to go through the experience of death. So the gospel today deals with who will have the last word. As we prepare for Easter, we know that we can have, cannot have the full impact of resurrection unless we're honest with those times when we've felt to be without hope, when things were overwhelming. Similar to how Mary and Martha must have felt when Jesus was not there in their time of need. He, the brother Lazarus, is dying, and yet Jesus delays his return. For some reason, he stays behind and prays, rather than rushing to their aid. And yet in that period, maybe Martha and Mary are being prepared for the joy of resurrection life. The power of the Easter faith that we are previewing in this story of Lazarus being called from the grave. Is God is greater even than death and we can trust and believe him. We always have reason to hope. Yes, it is a road that detours sometimes through a cemetery. Yes, it is a road that detours through the realities of life and we have to face them head on. Lazarus is a real person. Lazarus is a real friend of Jesus with sisters Mary and Martha. And no wonder they mourn and grieve and cry. They are already convinced that Jesus could have healed him if he just got there in time. Jesus, or perhaps it's the writer of this gospel, who decides to use the conversation with Martha, Martha as a moment to teach and maybe to teach us. We are helped to understand that Jesus is intimately connected to God, to the great I am. And you'll remember that Moses first met this great I am as he was being prepared to lead the people out of slavery. And here again, we meet the great I am. Jesus proclaiming to Martha, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Jesus is aligning himself with this powerful living and re-enlivening God that appears throughout the scriptures. After being confronted by the second sister, Mary about his being late. Jesus takes notice of the grief. Jesus does not apologise for arriving late, but he does weep with them. He does, after all, show the humanity of God's Son. He prays, not because he needs to, but because he wants to work with God. And so in this story, like in the beginning of Genesis, we find that God in Christ speaks life and life comes to being. In the Gospel of John, the beginning starts with, in the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh. And so Jesus speaks a word. And those words are very simple, Lazarus come out. And so Lazarus comes out, out of the tomb, out of all the binding and his face is seen. Seeing Lazarus alive after he was dead, hearing Jesus connect with the I am, helps many people to understand who Jesus is, and they put their faith in him. 
So this is an old story, and maybe it's a long story, and maybe it's a familiar story. But my question to you and to us today is, can it become our story? Is it a metaphor for the times that we live in? In these troubling times, can we find hope and life all around us? The new and renewed life that is offered to Lazarus is also offered to us. We, the body of Christ, gathered but scattered today, we can open our hearts and our minds and receive the breath of his spirit. When Jesus calls us out, he frees us and he gives us life. He unbinds us so that we may become as one. It's the work of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that Jesus still calls us out. I need him to call me out, to unbind me, to allow me to become the person I am called to be. The promise of the story of Lazarus is that like Lazarus, Jesus loves us. Jesus weeps over us. Jesus is deeply moved by us and he brings life and freedom and a shining light into our darkness. So I leave you with this thought. This gospel today deals with the one who has the last word. Life and love triumph over death and we give thanks to God. Amen. Dear Father God, we are your church at home this morning. Our minds may turn to familiar things of weekly worship and the welcome handshake at the door and the time before worship before we catch up with friends and greet each other. The time to share news and share the music and the songs, prayers and words to help us. We have time to share here in our lives with friends, young and old, and at our coffee and biscuits after. We think of the people we usually sit by, the support and tears and laughter we share. Lord, we hold on to all this in our hearts because these are holy moments. And now in this place of worship as well, our worship will be different. And as we pray, there is something visible perhaps we can find to mark your worship time here in prayer. Perhaps a flower or a cross or a candle. There is time to think and ponder and hear your word to us this morning afresh. We are, Lord, your church at home. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in our believer's ear. It soothes his sorrow, heals his wounds, and drives away his fear. Lord, we thank you for this time in our service, a time when we can concentrate on your world and all your family worldwide, and closer to home in our community and in our families. We thank you for this beautiful world you've given to us. Everything, every good thing, Lord, you've given to us. We have everything we need, food, plants, animals, love of our families and friends. Also, we've got minds to explore your gifts and use them wisely. Obviously, Lord, we bring before you the ongoing change in our lifestyle due to this horrible virus. We pray for your healing on all who are ill, all who are affected by this. And we especially pray for those who have lost loved ones. And also they cannot be with them when they're feeling so ill and desperate, the families around. We thank you for all the medical help that we are given in this time. We thank you for the doctors, the medical health officials, all the NHS staff, all who are working long, hard hours to ease this situation. Help us to be responsible people. We also pray for poorer countries who will be it even harder, Lord. Christian Aid and other charities 
will be working on site to help prepare communities to limit the impact of this virus. Many are also living with reduced health resilience because of extreme poverty and the overcrowded humanitarian camps. We are praying, Lord, for all those affected by this virus, both in Britain and overseas, for all those working on the front line. Keep them safe and provide them with all the necessary medical equipment. Loving God at this time, still our hearts. Assure us of your presence. Help us to know we are not alone. May we know your steadfast love and mercy for each moment of each day and night. Psalm 57 verse 1 says, I will take refuge in the shadow of your wing until the disaster has passed. I ask these prayers in your precious name, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. As we come to the end of our service, um, I wonder if you could all un unmute yourself because we're going to finish with the grace. And I, I know that every time we say the grace, there's a time delay and people seem to all be saying it on their own or not together. I don't think that's important. I think what is important is that we all say the grace to each other and that we all know that we are together as a family and that we all belong to God. So can we say the grace together? May the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the love of God, 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 and the love of God bless. God bless. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. And good to see you, Julie, and look see to the rest you. of the people at Elmwood. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.